So we have uh, five parts of the presentation. First, the introduction, then we're gonna go through the four phases of ignition, the technological solutions for, for uh, inertial fusion, the ICF plant, how an, uh, a theoretical ICF plant would, would be, and the conclusions of the presentation. So uh, we're going to go over what we know up to now, what we have seen in the, in the other topics of the, of the, of the presentation. No? First, the most favorable fusion reaction is deuterium and tritium. These are very small nuclei, which we have to bring together in order to make them fusion, in order to make them turn into a single, into a single nuclei. But the nuclei are positively charged, so they have a large force that's repulsive, and therefore we need a lot of energy in order to bring them together and to have nuclear fusion. The Lawson criterion compares the rate of energy being generated by fusion reactions to the rate of energy losses to the environment. So when the rate of production is higher than the rate of loss, the system is said to be ignited. And the third, thing, third important thing that we've learned in previous topics is that, especially in the first two topics of yesterday, is that the plasma must be confined to reach these, these conditions established by the Lawson criterion. So in order to confine the plasma, because plasma is like it's the fourth state of matter, so if we heat a liquid, we will have a gas. If we continue to heat a gas, we will reach the state of plasma, well, where the whole matter is ionized. And this, uh, this state, when left in a container, like a gas, expands to the whole container. So we say it must be confined in order to, to produce the conditions uh, to fulfill uh, a nuclear fusion. And we have three ways of doing this. The first way, and don't be scared, is whoa <laughs> is gravita gravitational uh, confinement this is the one that happens in the sun so in the sun the light that we have outside is uh, happens because the force of the sun of the sun's gravity confines the particles of fusion and produces fusion creating this uh, this light energy the second way is what enrique presented before magnetic confinement fusion where a plasma is, uh, is confined by a magnetic field. And the third way of confinement that we, that we know of and that we use is inertial confinement fusion, which is the one with all, where, with all the lasers. We have lasers that shine on a small capsule and uh, compress the capsule, creating a fusion in the fuel that is inside the, the capsule. So as part of the, the last part of the introduction, this is called inertial confinement fusion. So inertia. Inertia is defined by the Cambridge Dictionary as the physical force that keeps something in the same position or moving in the same direction. So if something starts moving in a direction and it has enough acceleration, it will continue moving in that direction. And this is caused by inertia. So we're going to use this force to, uh, to confine our plasma in this kind of, in this kind of fusion. Deuterium and tritium particles are accelerated by an external force towards the center point, the force being the laser, as we will, we will discuss later. And the main characteristic of ICF is the way of confining the deuterium tritium. It's the particle's own inertia that confines it. Its own inertia towards the central point confines the, the plasma. So the lasers are shone on the particle, compressing it and compressing the deuterium and tritium in its interior. The particle is very, very small, as we see in this picture, only about two millimeters in diameter, and the, the fuel would go inside the, 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 um, the capsule. And when we compress the, the capsule, as we will see later, the fusion is obtained in the, in the center. So for the last part of the introduction, as Enrique discussed, the Lawson criteria in, uh, in uh, magnetic confinement fusion, we will discuss it in inertial confinement fusion. The main difference is that it has a different formal definition because this is a dynamic process. What does this mean? That in magnetic confinement fusion, there's a time criterion to, to fulfill, and in inertial confinement fusion, the criterion is of superficial density. So we have to obtain a certain density in a certain area to uh, confine the plasma. 
this is the this is the way in which the Lawson criterion would be expressed in uh, inertial confinement fusion. So this results in uh, the fact that inertial confinement fusion has smaller confinement times than magnetic confinement fusion. It requires larger densities, and it also requires larger pressures, up to one gigabar, which is one thousand million times the atmospheric pressure. So now we're going to go into the second part of the presentation, the four phases of ignition. When the laser shines on the, on the capsule, how uh, do we get uh, fusion? Firstly, the laser illuminates the target, the target being the, the capsule. And we're going to call the laser the energy driver, because it's what give us, gives us energy for the reaction. It illuminates the target, compressing the capsule and making the exterior of the capsule accelerated up, outwards. If the, the exterior of the capsule turns into plasma because of the high, high, very high energy deposition by the laser and shoots outwards, this pushes the interior of the capsule with the fuel inwards, compressing it. This is called uh, the conservation of momentum or, or, uh, or uh, action reaction. No? And it's the same, it's also called the rocket effect. Why? Because in a rocket, when a rocket shoots upwards, it shoots upwards because it's shooting gas downwards. And the fact of pushing the, the gas downwards pushes the rocket up, upwards by, uh, also by conservation of the, of the linear momentum. No? And this is the same effect that we will apply in fusion. So we shine the laser, the exterior shoots outwards, and the interior compresses, the fuel compresses. However, what is the problem that with, our, with the lasers that we have nowadays, we can only obtain in this way a pressure of 10 to the 2 megabars. This pressure is 50 times less than what we said we needed in the Lawson criterion. So we have a problem here. What can we do? Well, the solution is to create a hotspot in the center of the, of the, of the fuel capsule. This means that we try to get ignition only in, a small, in, the small, in the small center of the capsule and not in the whole capsule at the same time. This is like a spark that starts in the center and propagates to the rest of the, of the capsule. In this way, we need much less energy because the ignition happens only at a certain, at a very, very small place at the same time. So to recap, we have the first stage, laser illumination. Second stage, compression with the rocket effect, as we, as we discussed. Third stage, ignition in a central hotspot. And fourth stage, burning of the capsule. So we have a capsule of two millimeters of diameter. We create a hotspot of 50 micrometers in radius. Inside the capsule, we have three milligrams of deuterium tritium and we will burn 30% of this deuterium tritium. We can't get a burn of the, whole, of the whole capsule, of the whole content. And with this, we produce 100 megajoules of energy per capsule. The problem with uh, energy is that we, oftentimes we don't have the, the orders of magnitude in our head for energy because we're always talking in power, not the power of a nuclear power plant or the power of a, produced by a, by a by a certain reaction or by a certain, by a certain fuel. And uh, in energy, uh, the equivalent of 100 megajoules is 100 kilograms of TNT. So from burning 30% of three milligrams of deuterium tritium, we're obtaining the equivalent energy to burning 100 kilograms of TNT. So it's just fairly incredible. Now, after seeing the whole process of inertial confinement fusion, we're going to go through the technological solutions. How do we, do we what are the technological solutions that we, that, we have fought, that we have found to put this into, into practice? First, we'll discuss types of, targets, of target illumination. The target can be illuminated by a direct drive or an indirect drive. The direct driver illumination is the creation of a central hotspot. It is what we were discussing before. The laser shines directly on the capsule, compressing it, and creating a hotspot in the center of the capsule. This has easy manufacture because we only have to create the capsule. It is very fairly efficient because the laser shines directly on the capsule. And the problem with this is that illumination is not very uniform because the laser is very far away from the small capsule. 
So getting uh, a uniform illumination is difficult. And sometimes we will end up with the capsule being compressed like a rugby, like a rugby ball shape and uh, the hotspot not being central. So the burn of the capsule isn't very, isn't very, very uniform, no? And with indirect drive, we, we uh, resolve this problem. Indirect drive is when a laser shines on what we call a Hochlaum, and it is a cylinder of gold or lead, so a high, high Z number a material, that when the laser shines on the, on the cylinder, this cylinder emits X-rays that then shine on the capsule. With this, what we try to, to gain is a very uniform illumination of the capsule, as we can see in the, in the picture in the, bottom, in the bottom of the screen. The laser goes in, shines on the, on the cylinder, and the cylinder emits X-rays that shine on the capsule and produce, produce fusion. The second, uh, the second difference that we want to make in technological solutions is the types of ignition that we can have. We can also have two types of ignition. We can have central ignition, which is what we, what we discussed before, with only one driver. We only have one energy driver, the laser, that shines on the, on the capsule and produces the, the ignition and the burning. Or we can have fast ignition, where we have more than one driver. We will have a first the laser that compresses the capsule in central ignition, and then we will have a second laser that will start and will create the hotspot on in the in the capsule, and it will and it will burn in this way. So we have a second laser that's like the spark, uh, the spark that creates ignition. I really like to compare this uh, this to with a metaphor to uh, to engines to car engines. So if there are any engineers in the in the audience, they will they will understand this better with this metaphor. I think. This is like comparing a diesel engine and a, and, a normal, and a normal gasoline engine. The diesel engine compresses the fuel until it has ignition, and a gasoline engine compresses the fuel, and then the spark plug produces a small sp spark that will then ignite the whole fuel. So in the same way, central ignition would be like a diesel engine, and fast ignition has a little spark plug in the form of another laser that produces the, the ignition. The concept of uh, fast ignition that we see here is a, is a gold uh, cylinder that protects the second laser that will enter the, the capsule, uh, producing fast ignition. So the, the advantages of uh, fast ignition is that the compression and ignition phases are separated in different drivers. This gives us, this means that we need less energy and it gives us more ad adaptability because each laser can be, can be uh, can be uh, more efficient for its own uh, for the, each of the phases. One laser will compress, the other will ignite. So each laser pulse will be uh, will be tailored to the needs of each of those phases. Whereas in the in the central ignition, we only have one laser, so we we can't have this adaptability. You know, but it is also more difficult to apply in a plant because this is more difficult to manufacture. And to finish the presentation, uh, an ICF plant. What we've what we've uh, what we've list, what we've heard up to now is how would we would produce ignition in one single capsule. But the problem is the one single capsule isn't enough because one single capsule produces energy, but we need power. We need energy per unit time. So in a in a, an ICF plant, in order to produce uh, electricity, we would need to have a, a flow of capsules that would ignite and that would transfer their energy to a coolant. And uh, this coolant would move a, a, turb a turbine in the same way as a, as a normal power plant, as, as current nuclear power plant, or by, in fact, any kind of uh, power plant, a coal power plant also works in this way by moving a coolant and producing a certain amount of energy per unit, per unit time. So as a conclusion to the, to the presentation, in inertial confinement fusion, a laser is used to transmit energy to a capsule that contains deuterium and tritium. If certain thermodynamic conditions are met, the fuel will undergo fusion, producing helium, neutrons, and energy. This process takes place in four stages in the traditional schema, energy deposition, capsule acceleration, compression, heating of the fuel in a central hotspot, and the ignition of the fuel. Two main types of capsule illumination exist, direct and indirect drive. So when the laser shines directly on the capsule and the laser shines on the cylinder that then produces X-rays, 
and two types of ignition. Fast, when we have a spark, and central, when the laser is the one that compresses the, the capsule. And we have also reviewed the technology of an ICF plant. So thank you very much for watching. And this is the end of the presentation. And be sure to ask any questions that uh, may arise in the chat as, as Paco is telling you.